work that we are looking at that we need to do, unlike the Western countries which have a fairly homogeneous population. I have also found in the test, which I have no time right now, but we have realized multilingualism, bilingualism, monolingualisms are issues in tests you perform differently on the language-based test depending on whether you are bilingual or multilingual. And using the Western battery of tests, you are doing a great injustice in your diagnosis. So I think pretty much the kind of diagnosis we are arriving at in India are, I'm sorry to say, at fault, right away, with the kind of tools we have. So for me, this whole work ahead is of creating those robust tools to be able to arrive at the right diagnosis early enough and the types of diagnosis. Adaptations, translations, literacy issues, uneducated populations in the rural areas. Our cognitive tests are so heavily loaded on education and literacy. We have to do a major, major work ahead. And then comes, of course, the skills and expertise of the examiner. If, you know, you need terrific skills to test the ethics. They are defensive, there's lack of insight. When the dementia progresses, there's lack of insight. There's nothing wrong with it. Then you start with this test and you show them some pictures. You think I'm a child, you're asking me all this rubbish. Do you know who I am? I am the CEO of this company and you're making me sit here and do all this, asking me to do some digit forward and digit backward and all that rubbish. My grandchildren do this. So first, to start with all the humility, to tell them it's not about this. Mm -hmm. I start by telling them I'll be asking you some questions that will seem ridiculous to you. Please bear with me. And in the middle, when they cannot answer, because they are feeling the test, the defensiveness, that's just because, you know, I haven't done this for such a long time. So how am I supposed to be doing it? So fair enough, sir, I understand that, I appreciate that. It's really silly, this test. But since we have to do it, please help me, please do that much. So that part of the challenge, hearing, vision, I categorically have to tell them, bring your glasses, bring your hearing aid if you have. Again, the confound of so many people I find that you think they have a hearing loss and the family says they've been shouting and then they hear. So what about shouting? It's auditory comprehension. It's a language failure. The comprehension is failing now. They are no longer understanding. And when you're talking fast and there are multiple people talking, they don't understand. So you basically think the person is deaf, they do the hearing test and they realize it's cognitive. It's not a hearing loss. So many tiny factors have to be factored in and the skill of the examiner to draw out that response. The person doesn't respond to you. If you say he's failed the test, unfair. It's just that he's not responded to you for a variety of reasons. The slowing, the time taking, so many things. And then the attitudes, as I told you, of the patients. Why are you doing this? Why can't you give me the drug? The imaging was done. That was so fancy and good. Technology, high technology. And then, of course, the awareness and attitudes of even the doctors, I'm sorry. Most of the doctors do not understand your psychological evaluation, the value of it, what it's going to give you at all. Next please. Actually, neuropsychological testing gives you very, very rich data at multiple levels. There is, of course, confirming the diagnosis. Is it truly dementia or is it just normal aging? Is it MCI? The specific and differential diagnosis that you can make depending on which domain they have failed in versus the other, how many domains. The functional outcomes, I know if a person has memory problems only, then I know what his problems in his daily life will be versus another person with executive dysfunction. So one will fail, number one will need different strategies. One will need reminders, will need other things. Others will need organization and planning. So there's a number of things that we analyze and are able to guide families about. The disease progression, every family immediately wants to know what is prognosis. First is the accepting of the diagnosis. Second level of the journey is to say, how long? How long will he last? How will he progress? Which stage is he? What should we expect in the next level? So with these evaluations, we are able to analyze and share with them what are the possibility and counsel them. Modify the treatment regimes. I think as we are getting, uh, as research is occurring, even these, and we know already that these cognitive pro profiles are the ones which help, will help us tweak the medication regimes already in all the drug trials. It's the cognitive tools and the assessment which is helping us understand these issues. And decisional capacity also. If, to understand whether that person problem solving, executive dysfunction, is he in the capacity, if it's only memory per se, and otherwise executive planning and everything else is good, they still may have the ability to decide things. 
if they are reminded of something and run through the information, unlike a person whose executive functions have been, next please, 